This video is about curcumin. Now, what is curcumin? Curcumin is the famous polyphenol found in the herb turmeric, the root turmeric. It looks like ginger, only it's orange on the inside. So a recent paper uh, suggested that it might be useful for treating uh, COVID-19. And so you can see the my title is Curcumin from Turmeric as a Treatment for COVID-19. Really? Is that possible? Well, this is what the paper, this is the paper. It just came out. It was accepted in August of this year, and so it came out recently. You can see cur curcumin, a constituent of turmeric, new treatment option against COVID-19. Now, it should have a question mark, and the reason why is because it hasn't been demonstrated yet. So let's do a little bit of uh, intro info about curcumin. So curcumin is one of the most extensively studied natural products in existence. So the outside of, of turmeric looks kind of like ginger, only ginger is a little bit lighter, but they're both roots. And if you live in, a, in, a, in, a, in an area of the country or the world where your ground doesn't freeze, you can grow turmeric. Now, this is a 2 foot by 12 foot bed that I built, and I'm just showing you where I planted the turmeric. Now, I didn't just lay it in there. I dug down and then on top of it, put a bunch of mulch, put a bunch of, uh, uh, well, yeah, mulch. So spring comes and it starts to grow. And that's what it looks like, a big, like uh, lily almost. So when it gets full grown, so I've got turmeric growing in three spots in my yard. This is a different spot, and you can see how fully grown it is. It gets up to about four feet or more, and this is a nice little flower. Pretty sure it's edible, no, but I forget. I haven't eaten it yet. But anyway, that's what turmeric looks like. Now, the reason why I got this weed here is because this weed is called purslane, which is actually very healthy, anti-inflammatory, very nutrient-dense, so-called weed. Okay, so more on curcumin slash turmeric. So this was from a paper back in 2008. You can see the title, calling curcumin cure cumin. Now, there's a problem with this language. Like if you read it from the, a scientific perspective, you know they're not. It's not going to cure colon cancer. So all these different conditions for which curcumin has been tested, either on humans or on animal models, it has been shown to have a beneficial effect. Cures are kind of hard to achieve by merely just adding an herb to one's diet. Sometimes, depending upon how bad you are, but for the most part, you need to make lifestyle changes as well. We can see it's very, very diverse in its use. Now you can see here, so many studies I've done recently have been about obesity and why it's so important to get the obesity inflammatory state under control when it comes to COVID-19, the flu, and of course chronic diseases. So this article talks about curcumin and its usefulness in obesity. So you can be obese and you can take curcumin and get an anti-inflammatory benefit. Will it be enough? I can't, I can't predict in advance. Part of what it does, as you can see here, is curcumin suppresses immune cell. Macrophages are immune cells. It suppresses immune cell activation and infiltration into the body fat mass. So it has a beneficial effect. So how much curcumin does this guy need to take to get a beneficial effect? I cannot say. My feeling is, of course, that we shouldn't live on this with no vegetation probably lots of soda and sweet tea, get a big old belly like this, and expect that curcumin is going to cure us. It's kind of like not the way to go. Same thing. So this guy here, an obese guy who was in the news many, many times, uh, you can see he thought coronavirus was a fake crisis. Now, I never thought it was a fake crisis. I don't think any virus is a fake crisis. Some people don't believe that viruses exist. I mean, I don't know. I've, I, I mean, I've never looked at one of their microscopes, so I can't say for sure. But what I can tell you, I don't think it's a fake, that these are fake crises. The issue is, is your body able to handle a stressor like a virus or any other stressor? So this is a picture of this dude in the hospital. Look at the size of this guy. He's enormous, absolutely enormous. Could him taking curcumin slash turmeric prevented him from going to the hospital? Don't know don't know. How much would you have to take? Don't know, because no one knows. This isn't just me being cavalier and superficial. I just don't know. But I do know this much. You can see 
what they used here. So, uh, or what they discussed in this one paper. So, um, people have consumed up to 12 grams of turmeric per day for three months with no uh, untoward effects. So you can go pretty high with this. Showed you in the previous video about ginger that one guy with rheumatoid arthritis who's 50 years of age used 50 grams of ginger cooked in meals every day and that for him resolved his rheumatoid arthritis. So there's a threshold probably depending upon how flamed up you are. So could this guy here have been prevented from going to the hospital? This guy changes nothing in his life at all and just pounds uh, ginger and turmeric. Will that help him? You don't know until you try. And you can, of course, check it by looking at inflammatory markers, by, and, and the biggie would be C-reactive protein. So this guy was in the news, and his wife was also in the news. So he, remember, he thought it was a hoax, and his wife, he mentioned in this article previously, uh, back in, I guess, April, May, June, or whatever it was, that his wife was also hospitalized. Like him, she was intubated, and she passed away. You can see she also is obese. Now, these people are morbidly obese, and they are in their 40s. So if they were, so, so, so you think the thing about the lifestyle that these people lead, clearly zero meaningful exercise, absolutely overeating sugar, flour, and refined oils. Could they have taken turmeric or ginger, or turmeric and ginger, and, had, and, and been protected? Don't know. No studies have been done. But if you're going to do nothing else, it certainly is worth a try. Same thing for this. I mean, this is the worst of all the stories that I came across because she's only 12 years old and she died. Did a video on her, the 12-year-old who passed away from COVID. So they get locked down. They stay indoors. They do all the stuff, the masking, hand washing, all the superficial hygiene, sanitation stuff, but nothing about helping the body. Why didn't they? Well, because it was not broadcasted that they should. So could... This young girl, this 12-year-old, if she had been taking turmeric and ginger, could that have helped her? Don't know. So if you find yourself as one of these obese people watching this or you have patients or friends who are obese and you're sitting around hoping it doesn't get you, you might want to do something. And if you're not going to exercise, not going to eat properly, not going to lose weight, talk to your physician and maybe pounding turmeric and ginger might be the thing for you. So why should we consider pounding turmeric? in the context of COVID or the flu virus. So in this paper, here is a section of turmeric slash curcumin, which is, the again, the active ingredient in the herb. So the herb is called turmeric. Curcumin is one of the, the most potent anti-inflammatory bioflavonoid or polyphenol. So when you look at studies for the antiviral effects, what you see is they have been done with just cultured cells. This is not in the human body. These are cultured cells. And so even here, it's effectiveness against these other cells. Cultured, I haven't checked every study, but for the most part, they are culture cell models because how many people do you know who've been cured of HIV by taking turmeric? Well, probably nobody. So this is, these are culture effects. How many years ago is this? Back in uh, 30 years ago, in 1990-ish, late 80s, Late 80s, I guess it was. Late 80s, 90, 90, 91. Uh, I started looking at um, at how vegetation had impacted uh, viral activity, and there are many papers that showed that things like spinach juice and other concentrates of of vegetation had antiviral, antibacterial effects. And of course, again, these are in in they're called in vitro. They're petri dish type studies. They're you know outside the body. So they have a powerful effect outside the body, a minor effect inside the body. So who knows how much one might take, need to take if you're super flamer. So here are, now again, this is from this study. Here's a study published just recently in 2020, into 2020. So here are curcumin effects. And when you see a, 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 a mark like this, it means inhibition. That means inhibition. Arrow means stimulation. Okay. So you can see what curcumin does. I did a video uh, where about the ACE2 enzyme, which is the enzyme by which SARS-CoV-2, so we, we, what you're looking at here, these are called alveoli. These are the, the areas of your lung tissue where, where oxygen is exchanged, or when you breathe in your oxygen, it gets down into these little alveoli, and the oxygen 
enters the blood supply and CO2 is released from the blood supply. So you breathe out, CO2 comes out, you breathe in, you add oxygen. So ACE2 is the enzyme by which the SARS-CoV-2 virus enters lung cells. And so the question here is, does it might help it increase ACE2? Now, ACE2, of course, is very important because it's anti-inflammatory. So by increasing ACE2, it doesn't mean that you, that you, that you increase the virus. ACE2, the SARS-CoV-2 virus actually inhibits ACE2. So that's why it might be beneficial. So this is, they're not sure. You can see the question mark. Is it, a, is it helpful? So what does curcumin do? It inhibits cytokines. It inhibits chemokines. It inhibits free radicals. It inhibits this pro-inflammatory nuclear factor. So you can see here are cytokines. Well, IL-17, a cytokine. Cas3, not sure what it is. This is a, involved in platelet uh, aggregation and, and uh, oh, uh, fibrin deposition, actually. So there are multiple anti-inflammatory benefits. You can see over here, bradykinin receptor inhibits it. The Cox enzyme, which creates PG2, inhibits it. So multiple beneficial effects, even inhibiting the uh, a signaling molecule for uh, bacteria is, is one of the biggies there. So all these benefits. Now, now, when you look at this, do you see any viral killing? And of course, you see no. There is no viral killing taking place when you take curcumin. So what does curcumin do? Curcumin cre is, is anti-inflammatory. So if this person is inflamed and infected, they could die. If this person gets infected and they are less inflamed, they can survive. And so from this perspective, the question is, and this research is, if people pound turmeric slash curcumin, can it save them from dying from COVID-19 or the flu? Hard to say, don't know. I suspect for certain people, yes. Other people, no, depending upon how flamed up you are. So here is your SARS-CoV-2 virus. This is from the same paper all the beneficial effects of curcumin. And so you can see, you know, the antiviral effects, you know, I just, all these images, all this, what I just showed you right here is not antiviral. This is all anti-inflammatory. So the actual antiviral effects cannot say what they may be. Antipyretic just means anti-fever, which is anti-inflammatory. Antiemetic means, you know, anti-feeling nauseous. So uh, curcumin inhibits cytokines. Those are the biggies for driving the terrible outcome from the cytokine storm that you can die from if you're infected with the flu or, or SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus. So you can see here, anti-nociceptive, anti-inflammatory. Anti-fatigue is because inflammation is fatiguing. So you see all these benefits, the large majority have nothing to do with actually killing viruses. They are creates an anti-inflammatory state or drives an anti helps to drive an anti-inflammatory state to reduce your chance of having a bad outcome if you do get infected. So how do you put all this together? Well, from an image that I use on many, many, many times because to me it's very useful, what do you need to do? The best way to survive the flu, COVID-19, any other virus is to do what? Get your weight normal. Get your glucose levels all normal. Get your vitamin D level normal. And of course, take vitamin D based upon your level. And well-known uh, immune benefits, um, reduced risk of infection, reduced numbers of infections because the inflammation is reduced by taking vitamin C, zinc. Ginger is also useful, as is turmeric, which is what this video is about. But you can see I make it as a, as a, as a component of an overall approach rather than just say, take turmeric for COVID. You want to do all four and then to reemphasize, so to get your weight normal, you do this by replacing refined food calories with vegetation, just like you see on the cover of my first book for the general public. Take this vegetation and wash away all these pro-inflammatory calories. Doesn't mean you can't have them. It means you want to reduce them so that you get your weight normal, your glucose levels normal, all your other inflammatory markers normal like C-reactive protein, get D-normal, Take some C, zinc, ginger, turmeric, assuming there are no drug interactions. Get rid of your refined food calories to a bare minimum. Replace them with vegetation. Very simple. Generally has an immediate benefit that's anti-inflammatory and help can, can help to reduce a hyperimmune response, which you do not want if you get injured or infected with the virus or a bacteria. 
So we need to realize that we are always going to be exposed to new stressors and new viruses. So the best way to be prepared is to be deflamed. So these five points here, very simple, nothing revolutionary there, but you got to do all of it. So this book is about how the big old flame and uh, drives uh, severe viral infections. We want to get the body weight normal, which is what this book is really beneficial for. This explains what happens to immune health and to, uh, to the body during viral infections when you're flaming versus not flaming. And of course, this book is just a general book about inflammation reduction. So if you want to learn all you can and do all you can to uh, get yourself prepared for the cold flu corona season and who knows what else is coming down the road, you want to get one through five done. Many ways to do it. These are the three books that I would recommend in my domain, my Flame world, and of course watching my videos. So these books, you can get them at Amazon. Single copies there. Volumes are available at uh, via my website. You just got to click right through and click on the, uh, then, you know, for example, you can get 10, 15, 12, I forget how many, but sequentially increased volumes gets you reduced price. So you can do that for all these books. And you can just go right there. Very simple, dflame.com.